I have done videos on using awesome headphones for gaming. We've done many roundups on gaming headsets, but today let's give respect to earbuds for gaming and why you should be using them. There are many advantages why earbuds are awesome for gaming. For one, they won't mess up your hair for that voluminous look. Hey. Sure, earbuds are also tiny, so they're easy to travel with, great for mobile gaming with a notebook, controller, switch, or smartphone. They're so much better for VR headsets and guaranteed no issues with glasses and also have incredible isolation. I think we have a nice selection of earbuds that range in prices, features, and connectivity, but the gaming prerequisite here for me was the inclusion of a built-in microphone on all of these pairs that is an important value add to avoid extra equipment for comps purposes. Another important value add, a subtle channel, is music to my ear canals. I will be using the new THX Onyx as my driver of choice for all of these since the cables on all earbuds is pretty too short to comfortably route them into the back of my motherboard, even with a system this close. Plus it's kind of the perfect complement for this like minimalist, minimizing the cables setup for audio. I also downloaded The Village so we can do this right. Let's begin right after this. Introducing a new way to temper glass with a Divider 300 series from Thermaltake. I love me a good triangle, there's certain mystery behind it with a flexible interior layout so you can showcase your system in a particular way. The Divider 300 TG, triangle the right way. Now before we get into the actual earbuds, a few things to keep in mind. When you put on the earbuds, obviously you can hear yourself think, you can hear yourself breathe and that was a huge turnoff for me in the beginning. As soon as you play anything, even at like 10% volume, that whole discomfort disappears. The second thing I realized is that cable is everything, not just from it brushing against your shirt, but is there a cable pull? Is it comfortable to wear? Um, and so those things I will be covering uh, as we go over each pair. By the way, everything will be listed in the description below. If you want to check it out, thank you very much. So we got some popular gaming earbuds, starting with the Razer Hammerhead USB-C ANC for $99. So they come with a soft case, extra silicon tips, and a set of foam tips as well. It's the only pair with active noise cancellation enabled via the inline controls with the really nice tactile triple button array as well. And they're also powered with USB-C. The Razer logo is illuminated in green only, no RGB here. The cable is part braided, part rubber, makes for a really cool looking pair uh, without creating this whole tangle mess. Each side is also clearly labeled for quick clarification. Now the ANC is quite minor, it helps to further mute your exterior and the tight seal complements a very private listening experience. Now I find these very comfortable with the default tips pre-installed and probably this is my most gaming ready earbuds that you will find in this roundup because they have awesome stereo imaging and the largest sound stage uh, in this roundup. Unlike with many others, the sound has great layering to experience the frightening village or hear the quietest cues in Tarkov. The bass region is satisfactory enough, although Logitech and others do it slightly better, but the rest of the resolution is fantastic for my ears. Then we have the HyperX Cloud earbuds for $39 because I'm really curious. Generally, I like HyperX audio products. These have 14 millimeter drivers and really high sensitivity of 116 decibels with extra ear tips, plus an awesome hard case for storage. The flat cable is tangle free with a 90 degree four pole jack and inline multifunction button with a built-in microphone on top of that as well. The red color is kind of a staple for HyperX. The left and right are a bit hard to see, but given the fairly large ear tips, you can't really mistake which side goes where. So this is the first set that didn't really work for me comfort-wise. Even with the smallest tips installed, the earbuds just simply wouldn't stay put. You know, a light pull would dislodge both sides, so they ended up just kind of hanging on my ears, just like AirPods would, without creating any seal. And this results in this very open, loose, and kind of boring audio that would leak out as well, not what you want from earbuds. Um, so yeah, not at all what I was expecting from HyperX. However, I am very impressed by the new Logitech G33 in ears for 49 bucks with those dual dynamic drivers, small soft case for storage and triple silicon ear tips. I love the aluminum design with those bright 
blue G's with two more color options available. The inline controls are easy to distinguish. The flat cable will keep the tangles away and the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter is a great addition for devices, especially for those inline controls to get to work. Now this to me is a very comfortable pair with the default ear tips. They are light, the cable pull is almost non-existent. You can see the cable flares outwards below my chin and unless you intentionally try to produce some cable noise, it's actually pretty quiet. Sound wise, it's very fun. There's a lot of bass behind that seal. Clarity and vocals are coming through without any harshness, but the resolution of the sound had me wanting a bit more. Still, I played for an hour without introducing any audio fatigue. Definitely a much different experience versus the previous HyperX earbuds. I also have some no-name brands like the Linsole KZ-ZS10 for $49 with the mic option because they just look so cool and have the removable cable that is over the ear, which reminds me of the awesome Shure SA215s. And like everything else in this roundup, there are three tip sizes available. Both the cable and the earbuds are left and right labeled with the inline mic and multifunction button included. Now these are unique because of this awesome transparent housing to reveal the red PCB and the audio components as well. I am honestly quite impressed at the modular cable element under the $50, plus they come in different colors, which is so cool. Now this is the most comfortable pair to me because the over-the-ear cable design means there's nothing pulling on the earbuds, unlike with basically everything else, unless it's wireless. The cable is incredibly light as well, and there's absolutely no cable noise whatsoever, even when you move too much or even pull on it. It's very impressive. This might become my go-to earbuds for gaming because they are just, they just have enough warmth, smoothness and clarity, just enough bass as well to have some fun uh, and just you can listen to them for hours and Forza 4 has been my go-to with this pair. Next up is the Linklight Classic 6 for $29, which are sold as these gaming earbuds, but are also targeted towards ASMR sleeping earbuds because it's the smallest pair in this roundup. I got the purple color because everything else is black and standard, so they kind of stand out. They have two extra sets of ear tips and a soft carry pouch is included. The built-in microphone and inline controls are easy to find and it doesn't get more basic than that. Now these are very low profile and small. I can see why people might want to sleep with these, but unfortunately the cable noise is the worst here versus all the others. Any tiny movement of the head would immediately send that noise directly into ears and sound wise, it's pretty muddy. Very poor resolution with that really harsh high end. You know, there's a lot of distortion on that sibilance and treble, so maybe not recommended. Now, hopefully this other $29 pair would fill in the budget shoes, the JBL Quantum 50. These are quite popular for larger ears because of the entire earbud structure, since they are fairly chunky, but still very light, which is great. The microphone below is very close and the inline controls are superior to everything else in this roundup, since there's a physical mic mute switch and a volume slider that is guaranteed to work across devices and also a multifunction button on the opposite side. Just like with the Razer pair, the cable is part rubber and part braided. Great for design, but cable noise is plenty abundant, even with the slight movement. The seal is awesome, however. With some music playing, my exterior completely becomes inaudible, but as many others online have pointed out, the large form factor is a bit of a negative, not because of the weight, but because the frame just outside the ear tips accumulates a little bit of pressure outside of my ears and becomes a bit uncomfortable. Sound-wise, it's plenty loud, but the bass is very flat, even with good seal. And if you're sensitive to sibilance distortions, I would stay clear. So they're kind of in that same realm as the previous pair. Uh, the high end is quite harsh. <sighs> and finally, the most premium pair that is also wireless, the GTW270 Hybrid from Epos. Hybrid because of the USB-C dongle with low latency aptX or Bluetooth 5.1 support. It has the most accessories in terms of cables, a little rubber protective cover for the USB-C dongle, extra silicon tips, and the charging case as well. They are IPX5 water resistant from light sweat or rain, hold about five hours of battery life from the single 
single charge with 15 more hours from the case itself. And it's one of the few wireless earbuds that I would maybe consider gaming worthy because of that low latency connection via the USB-C dongle. There's a multi-function button on the left earbud and despite their size, they don't look terrible. In fact, they kind of like disappear and I'd say are probably less noticeable than the AirPods. Comfort-wise, it's among my favorites, partially because there's no cable pull and the small ear tips fit me very well. Both sides are secured. I could run with these no problem or shake my head uh, aggressively. The thing is, I don't like the location of the button on the left earbud as it's not easy to press and you end up just like squeezing your ear instead. And sound wise, unfortunately, you can tell they're wireless because the resolution is a bit disappointing, especially versus the ZS10 or the Hammerhead USB-C. Still, they're quite smooth, pleasant uh, and for like single player environmental stuff where you don't need a microphone. Uh, and that is because the USB-C Aptex low latency dongle has only the playback channel, so you cannot use them uh, with the microphone. So the microphone can only be activated in Bluetooth mode, which kind of cripples the whole wireless nature of this thing for gaming. Uh, and so that's kind of disappointing. And also note on the wireless performance, it's mostly good, but the range is not nowhere near of what you get with regular wireless headsets. And even sitting like really close to my computer, uh, I would occasionally receive some disconnections or crackles in the audio. All right, so time for the microphone test. What you listen to now is the G333. The thing is, you have to kind of keep the microphone close to your mouth, otherwise it sounds a bit distant and kind of muted. So, it's not really ideal, but the sound quality is very good. The only thing is that because the ear tips have really good isolation, it's just really uncomfortable speaking and not being able to hear yourself or hearing yourself in the head. You know what I mean? Next up is the HyperX Cloud earbuds. So the microphone here is slightly closer to your mouth. You don't necessarily need to hold it to your mouth, but you still will get much better quality if you do so. Um, and because they don't have any isolation, this is a very comfortable, uh, pair to wear and use the microphone if you if you need communications. Next up here we have the ZS10. So this one seems to be by default a bit more sensitive than the others, which is definitely a positive. But you let me know what you think about the quality. Next, let's start with a $29 pair. So here's the JBL Quantum 50. The microphone is very close, right underneath my chin basically. So the audio quality should be, I don't know, theoretically good because it's very close to my mouth but uh, let me know what you think. Here's the other $29 pair. Now, sensitivity is again, very low. You have to boost that through your software. And this is one of those things where isolation here is so good that it's very weird speaking when I can hear it in my head here and not in the external environment. And finally, here's the Hammerhead USB-C with ANC enabled. You know, the sensitivity here is slightly better, but just like with everything else here, you kind of have to hold the microphone close to your mouth. Otherwise, it sounds like it's very distant and it's not really being as good as it should be, you know? It'd be great if the microphone was like right around the mouth, but it being so low, you kind of sacrifice a bit on the quality there. But based on everything you heard today, which microphone sounded best to your ears? Let me know in the comments. And so to conclude, the earbuds I'm keeping for myself are the transparent blue ZS10. I love the sound quality, plus the cable over the ear is my preferred style for earbuds. The Logitech G333 has incredible microphone quality, like it's even better than Logitech's other gaming headsets. And the Razer Hammerhead USB-C NC is the best pair in this roundup for me that has the best resolution and they're simply comfortable to wear. They kind of disappear on your head, but the sound quality uh, is just by far the best in this entire roundup. And so that is it, my friends. If you're using earbuds for gaming, let me know which ones, and why did you even decide to go for earbuds versus you know, your traditional gaming headsets? Let me know in the comments. I hope this was quite helpful to decide whether or not you should use earbuds. Uh, and yeah, check out this other relevant content. All the links for products will be listed in the description below. I'll talk to you in the next video.